Welcome to Freedom's Foundation. I am the Constitution Guy and this is our third and final video in our series about the Commerce Clause. Now, if you haven't seen the first two videos, then you really need to just stop right here and go check those videos out first because those are where I explain what the original purpose behind the Commerce Clause is and what it actually means. Tonight, I'm going to give you three reasons why the way we interpret the, com the Commerce Clause today doesn't make any sense. Reason number one. Right now, our Supreme Court interprets the Commerce Clause to mean that Congress can regulate virtually any commerce in this country. But, if you actually read the clause, it says very specifically that Congress can regulate commerce with foreign nations, among the states, and with the Indian tribes. Okay, here's a really straightforward, common sense question for you. If the Founders had intended for Congress to have the power to regulate basically all commerce in this country, why did they lay out specific types? I mean, clearly, the fact that they laid out specific areas of commerce that the federal government can regulate, that tells us that there are other areas of commerce that the federal government can't regulate. I mean, if they had intended for Congress to be able to regulate all commerce, then the Constitution would say, Congress shall have the power to regulate commerce. But it doesn't. The founders chose the specific areas of commerce that they did, and not others, because those, being able to regulate those three areas of commerce helps the federal government to do the job it was designed to do. Reason number two. Remember, the purpose of the federal government is to create a positive, secure environment that the states can operate in. Now with that in mind, would it make any sense for the founders to give the federal government the power to regulate every minor aspect of creating and selling domestic products? Well, no, not really, because that does absolutely nothing to help the federal government do its job of creating that strong structure for the country. And frankly, it's something that the states can do a whole lot more efficiently. But interstate commerce is different, and here's why. Let's take a look at a map, or something I drew that kind of sort of resembles a map. Um, that's the United States. You can tell it's the United States because I tried to draw Texas and Oklahoma, and then I remembered how much I suck at drawing, and I thought, you know what? The rest of the states are just going to be squares. And they are. So, when we're talking about interstate commerce, what we mean is commerce that crosses state lines. So try to imagine all the products and services that cross state lines and move all over this country every single day. There's only one entity or one organization, whatever you want to call it, that's in a good position to be able to regulate that massive flow of products throughout the country. And that's the federal government. The states just aren't in a position to be able to handle this issue effectively. Look at it this way. Let's say that Illinois and Wisconsin get into a dispute about how a certain product should be transported from one state to the other. How are they supposed to decide who's right? That could get really, really messy if they're just left to fight it out between each other. But by giving the federal government the power to regulate interstate commerce, the founders were able to keep that type of dispute from happening in the first place. So you can see why the federal government would be the only organization that can effectively regulate interstate commerce, or commerce that crosses state lines. On the other hand, it makes absolutely no sense at all to give Congress the power to regulate commerce that's entirely contained within one state because it does absolutely nothing to help the federal government do the job it was created to do. Reason number three. In my introduction to the Constitution videos, you learned that our government is structured like a pyramid. Now, if our federal government has the power to regulate basically all commerce in this country, which is how we interpret that clause today, then that completely screws up this entire structure. Think about it. If our federal government has the power to come all the way down here and regulate transactions between individual citizens, or even if it has the power to come down here and regulate individual businesses, then what role do the states play in this structure? 
They don't really have one, do they? In today's world, the federal government is involved in basically every issue in this country. I mean, it's getting right into our personal lives now. So given that situation, what's the point of even having states anymore? Keep in mind that it was representatives of the states that came together and created the federal government, not the other way around. So why in the world would the states approve a constitution that basically makes them irrelevant? They wouldn't. So the fact that the federal government has basically taken over the role of the states should tell us that we're doing something wrong. It is really hard to overestimate what a big deal this is. The Constitution was designed very specifically to make sure that the federal government couldn't violate your rights or do bad things to you. The fact that we have now disregarded it to the point where the states are basically irrelevant means that that protection is no longer there for you. The federal government now has more than enough power to do bad things to you. I mean, it could ruin your life and take away your livelihood if it wants to. Wait, you think I'm being over the top? You think I'm just blowing things out of proportion here? Go talk to the guy in Colorado that's about to lose his air conditioning business because of the birth control mandate. Or talk to one of the GM dealers that lost their dealership because the federal government pressured GM to sever its dealership contracts with them. Of course, if we actually followed the Constitution, the federal government wouldn't have enough power to take away that guy's air conditioning business or to close those car dealerships. But we don't follow the Constitution. So the government was allowed to violate those people's rights and to do bad things to them. Can you see why it's so critical for us to understand the Constitution and to make sure that it gets applied properly? The Commerce Clause is a perfect example of exactly what happens when we don't understand the Constitution. It's a simple clause that was intended to give the federal government the power to make sure that products could move freely throughout the country. But now it's been used to justify allowing the federal government to get involved in your private life. And until we understand exactly what this clause means and what it doesn't, the politicians are just going to keep on using it to take away more and more of your freedom.